Welcome to another coding tutorial and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make this spiral wave. Today's video is a big personal milestone because it is the 100th video on this channel. And to celebrate, I decide to revisit the very first coding tutorial, the wave pattern, which happens to be one of your favorites as well. But in today's tutorial, we'll be making a tweak such that we'll be creating a spiral wave pattern instead of just a regular wave. Before we dive into an equation of a spiral, I want to start by just making a grid of moving circles. I want to translate the origin point from the top left corner of my canvas to the middle of the canvas. So I'm going to do that by using the translate function and move it to the middle of the canvas. So the arguments will be width divided by 2 and height divided by 2. Then I'm going to draw a circle using an ellipse function. And the ellipse function takes in a total of four arguments. The first two are the x and y coordinate of the center of the circle. And then the third and the fourth are the width and the height. So we're going to start by putting 0, 0. And we can do that because we already moved the origin point to the middle of the canvas. And then for the width and the height, I'm going to put r times 2 and r times 2, where r is the radius, which I'm going to set at 150. I'm also going to put no fill. All right. Now I want to draw a smaller circle that is going to be traveling along the path of this big circle. And to get the x and y coordinate of that smaller circle, we must convert from polar coordinates to Cartesian coordinates. And we can do that by using the equation x equals to r times cosine of angle and y equals to r times sine of angle. And how about we set angle equals to zero for now. Then we just need to provide x and y as the first two coordinates. And how about we set the size at five. All right, so now we have the circle here. Then how about we fill it with black and actually make it a little bit bigger. All right, and now for it to travel along this path, we need to increment the angle, right? So I'm actually going to set angle and map it to the location of my mouse. So mouse x between 0 and width, and I'm going to map it to the value of 0 and 2 pi. So I'm actually going to be using the radiance mode instead of the degrees mode, which goes between 0 and 2 pi. All right, so let's click run. Now as I move my mouse from 0 to width, the circle travels along the path of the big circle. Perfect. Now, how about we put all of this code into a class, and I'm going to click this arrow here, click the plus sign, and then click Create File. I'm going to call this file circle.js. And then before we start writing a class, we need to go to index.html file, and then we need to integrate the new file by just copy and paste this line of code, change the name here to the name of your new file, in my case, circle.js. And this is how you integrate a new JavaScript file into your program. Now we are ready to write a class. And I'm going to name my class circle. In the constructor function, what do we need? Let's go back to sketch.js. So we have the variable r and angle. I'm actually going to set r as a global variable. So all we need is angle. All right, so let's set this dot angle equals to 0. As for the methods, how about we start with display. And for display, what we need, we don't need this map function anymore. And then we need all of these. Okay. Now, instead of translating it to width divided by 2 and height divided by 2, we want to translate it to a specific location. So how about we actually give a variable for this as well. I'm actually going to set it as a parameter cx equal to cx and cy equals to cy. And we'll provide these as the arguments when we call the function. Now inside translate, it will be this.cx and this.cy. And we need to change this dot angle here. So this dot cx and this dot cy is the x and y coordinates of the big circle, while x and y here is the x and y coordinates of the smaller circle. 
All right, so how about we also create another method called move and we use this to increment the angle by a specific amount. Let's call it speed and then put it as an argument here. All right, let's just try to create this one object. Let's call it C and C is going to be a new circle. Then we need to provide the CX and CY arguments, right? So I just want to draw the same circle that we had initially. So it's going to be at the center of my canvas. And then now let's just call display. All right, and then if we called move, then we need to give it a speed. And because it is in the radiance mode, which ranges from zero to two pi or 6.28, so the speed that I'm gonna give is going to be smaller, so 0 0.01. All right, so now the circle is moving in the clockwise direction. Perfect. Next, let's create a grid of circles. So instead of a variable here, I'm going to create an array called circles. And then I'm going to create three more variables, columns, rows, and size. And I actually want to set the size to be, let's say, 50. And I want to change the radius here to be the value of size divided by 2. I want all the circles to be right next to each other and size will actually be the size of the diameter of the big circle and that's why radius will be size divided by 2. Now in size setup, first let's calculate columns and rows. So columns is going to be width divided by size and rows will be height divided by size. And then now we need to populate the circles array with circle objects. So we can do it using a nested for loop that goes from i equals to 0 to i less than columns, i plus plus, and let j equals to 0 to j less than rows, and then j plus plus. And then inside the outer loop here, first we're going to populate it with empty 1D arrays, and then we're going to, inside the inner one, create new circle objects. Now, for the x and y coordinates of each of the big circles in this grid, what is it going to be? I'm actually going to create two new variables, x and y. So x will be i times size, and then y will be j times size. And let's see what happened. So if we click run, Nothing happens because we also need to call display and move on all of these objects inside the circles array. So I can just copy and paste the nested loop here. And then now circles of i and j dot display. Okay, so the reason that you see this is because I forgot to put two important functions when we use a translate function, which are push and pop. So whenever we use transformation functions, we need to think about whether we want to use push and pop or not. And push function, save the transformation that we do. In this case, I move the circles to this location, this.cx and this.cy. And then the pop function will return it back to the original setting, which is when the origin point is at the top left corner of the canvas before it is calling the translate function again and then move it to the new location. And that's what we want to do. And if I do that, now we see a grid of circles. But you can see that it is actually off by a little bit, specifically by size divided by 2, right? So that's what we want to do. We want to move it slightly by size divided by 2 on both of these points. All right, and then now, how about we move the circles by 0 0.01. Okay. Now, the next thing that we want to do is, if you see here, you see that all of the angle starts at zero, which is because 
we set angle equals to zero here. So how about we give this as another parameter to the constructor function? So if you remember in the wave pattern tutorial, that angle is actually just x plus y. So by doing x plus y, all of the circles that are on the same diagonal line actually have the same starting point. And if I move it, it does look like a wave. We can also change the size to be smaller. <laughs> so just to show you that we actually do get the wave by changing the angle here. But that's not what we want to do for now, right? What we want to do is that we want to actually create a spiral pattern. So to do that, we need to look at an equation of a spiral. There are actually many types of spirals, but the one that we're going to focus on is this one that you see here, which is called an Archimedean spiral, named after the 3rd century BC Greek mathematician Archimedes. The distance of a point along this spiral is proportional to the angle theta measured from the x-axis, and we can actually describe this using an equation distance d equals to k times theta, where d is the distance from the point to the center of the spiral and k is a constant at which the spiral grows. Going back to the code that we just wrote, what we want to do is that we need to figure out what is the angle theta that will give us the spiral pattern. So if we come back here, what we want is now angle will be equals to d divided by k, right? So First, how about we declare what k would be? Let's set it to 10, just a random number. And then I'm going to create a variable called d. And d is going to be the distance between what? It's going to be between the center of the spiral, which we'll say that is going to be at the center of the canvas, to the point of each of the centers of these circles here, right? Which is what? x and y. So I'm going to use a built-in function called dist, which calculates the distance between two points, and it takes in four arguments, which are the two x and y coordinates of the two points that we want to calculate the distance in between. So what are those points? It is x and y, which is the center of each of these bigger circles, and the center of the canvas, which is width divided by 2, and then height divided by 2. Right? And then let's click Run. Ta-da! And now you have a spiral pattern. How about we move it? All right. So let's also try to vary this constant here. What happens? So it seems like the bigger the constant k, the more the less the more abstract of a spiral shape that you see right so it depends on what you like how about i keep it at k equals to 20 for now now i want to experiment with the shape so how about we set the size to be smaller and i don't want to see this big circles anymore looks pretty cool and then as you can see here, it is moving in the clockwise direction, right? And if I were to subtract it, now it seems like the spiral is expanding. I also want to move it a little bit faster. Let's do 0 0.05. All right. Then how about we actually give it a shape of an arc? And actually, an arc function takes in a total of six arguments, very similar to an ellipse function. The first two are the x and y coordinates of the ellipse that makes up that arc. And then we want to give it the size. So we can do, actually, it will be the size of the big circles, right? So it's going to be size and size. And then the fifth and the sixth arguments will be the angles where the arc starts and then where the arc ends. So we want it to start at this dot angle, right? And then where it ends, how about we do this dot angle plus, let's do pi divided by two. How about that? That looks cool. All right. And I want to actually make it smaller. 
And then the last thing that I want to experiment with is the color. And I want to change the color based on the angle of each of the arcs. But the angle in the move function here, we either subtract it by a specific speed or we add it by a specific speed. So it will actually go up more and more and more and more. So it doesn't range just between 0 and 2 pi, right? So I actually just want it to be between 0 and 2 pi. And I can do that by using an operator called modulo. And modulo basically returns a remainder between a division of two numbers. I'm going to actually print this out, the value of this dot angle mod 2 pi. So before I do that, let's actually set the size to 400. So there's only one arc and then Let's click run. All right, so let's look at this here. So we get the number between zero, down, 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 down to around 6.25, and then we get zero again. Two pi is what? Two pi is 6.28, right? So basically, this mod function returns a remainder between the division of this dot angle and two pi. And this dot angle, because we increment it more and more and more, it will actually be more than 2 pi. But by dividing it by 2 pi, it returns the remainder. So even if it is higher, it returns the remainder that is left after it goes into 2 pi a certain number of times. All right, so once we have this, what we can do is that what if I just set a variable c and map it between this value here, which goes between 0 and 2 pi to the value of the color that I want, which is between 0 and 255, then I'm just going to fill it with C. Let's see what happens. Also, I need to change the size back to 10. Ta-da! Cool. All right. The last tweak that I want to make, one is I actually want the circle to go out. So I just do subtract. But as you can see here, now it turns black. And that is because the value is negative. So what we need to do is that we can use an absolute function here to turn the values to positive, right? So if I click run, now it works and then i just want to put in no stroke as well all right and that looks really neat do you like it before i end this video i just want to thank you for being a part of my journey so far i've been having so much fun doing these videos weekly and i don't think i can do it without many of your encouraging comments replies to my emails and other types of interactions and i hope that you stick around because i have a lot of exciting things in the pipeline and if you want to get up to date to what i'll be doing be sure to subscribe to my newsletter the link is down below and with that i hope that you enjoy this one so give it a try